I would like to recognize uh, Sarah McCauley, who has been a Huntersville Town Commissioner for um, a while. One of the best and brightest we've got. With respect to the people here that are not about toll lanes, I'd ask that we start with those questions first, and then once we get you know enough of those done, we will certainly go to the toll lanes, and we will talk. We will, I'm sure Chuck will make a nice video about it. I'll be famous, so, uh, <laughs> you know, you know, I understand. I think that um, the toll lane issue is, it's obviously a very sensitive and, and passionate issue here in town. Um, I've made no bones of the fact, the fact that I have not spoken against it much to some people's desire for me to be more vocal in opposition to them. You know, I've seen the report that came out, uh, Mr. Noss, who has done, you know, let's be, uh, let's be candid, Mr. Noss has done yeoman's work at getting a lot of facts and figures out there. Uh, and I've more read... educated than the politicians. What's that? He's more educated than the politicians. Uh, Certainly, that's that's um, you're allowed. To, I mean, everyone's allowed to have their opinion. I mean, the reality is, um, there are a lot of moving parts. Pardon the pun. Give me an example. You know, we had the data come out. And you said it's twenty dollars. What I've been told is simply not true. And it is. It uh, you're going to pull out your range sheet. You're going to extrapolate one piece of data and say that's true in all cases. Uh, this. The state has uh, a built-in pricing matrix which sets the range of what the prices can be. And what the $20 is, um, as I understand it, and is in the worst case scenario. Um, it, is a, it is a less than 1% chance, according to what I've been told, that that number is accurate. So, it's, so it could happen, but what you're saying is, because the, the way I heard it qualified was, if you're going all the way from 33, which is the top of it, all the way down to 277, in the worst traffic, they could charge... Based on the numbers, based on the, the report, there are cases where that can occur. They're not going to charge 20 bucks. They can, but they're not going to. You don't know that. Yeah, I do, because I, uh, I, I do know that, because nobody's going to pay to get in the lane at 20 bucks. Exactly. And if no one gets pays to get in the lane at 20 bucks, they're not going to charge 20 bucks. So, the, so is that the high-end limit? Yeah, you know what? I can get hit by a bus walking out here. But it's not going to happen. Unless somebody pushes me. But the fact is, um, Charlie, the fact, the fact is, is that even if they don't make their money, then we're going to have to bail them out. And that's already happened uh, in other places. You know, there are some legitimate issues. Egress, ingress, where can you get on? Where can you get off? Um, what is the average travel time? Some of these things that are in this report, I think, have to be looked at and have to be considered. Well, absolutely. And that's one final thing, and I'll, and I'll shut up and let everybody else talk. But when 77 was originally built, I believe it was built around uh, somewhat of the idea of McGuire Power Station out here. Now that we have terrorism in this country, it needs to be an evacuation route. When we make it into these toll roads, like you just said, how can you get on, how can you get off? Does that not become a public safety hazard? And this toll project is going to take a lot longer than just adding one to two additional lanes for a shorter stretch, because when you come out of Charlotte, you come out of 277, you get past 85, even in rush hour, there's not that much traffic. It's only when you get up past North Lake Mall and up past the Beltway, then you go from five lanes down to three, down to two, and that's where all the congestion comes from. I, I, would, I would answer that question by saying this. Um, the idea of a single purpose general, single lane, general purpose lane within the 19 to 25 corridor, which is pitched as the alternative, for whatever reason, doesn't score very high in the MPO rankings. 
Well, have you told the General Assembly that there's this n nuclear power plant around this large population, and the only way for people, the only you, you don't button down the hatches. You get in your car and you go if there's a terrorist attack or something like that. Is that not taken into consideration? My understanding, and, and look, in all candor, I'm not an expert on all the formulas that are considered, Chuck, and I'm not going to sit here and act like I am. Mm -hmm. Uh, my understanding is that is part of the consideration made at the MOPO, or the MPO Um It is, you know, the reality you get into is we, we aren't doing statutory set-asides. We're not doing earmarks at the state level. It's not going to happen. Ben, go ahead. Um, real quick, or well, not real quick, but um, NCDOT, the Stantec report, we paid $4.5 million dollars. Uh, for that study that NCDOT did. That is an official report that was used, uh, published in 2012, 2013. And I spoke with Lewis Mitchell last week, Division okay. 10 engineer, yeah. very knowledgeable about Sir. this issue. He knows that on this Wednesday, there's going to be the uh, commercial close sign, that's I think public record, that will be signed this Wednesday unless there's somebody stands up to delay that. Um, the information I asked him, well, this is pretty significant information, Lewis. Who have you released it to? And he said, you know, only the NCDOT and the Joint Legislative Transportation Oversight Committee are allowed to see that, and they can only see it with a non-disclosure statement signed. Charlie, are you on the Joint Legislative Transportation Oversight Committee? I am. When did you see the Stantec report? It's never been presented to me. That scares the heck out of me. Is it possible? No is it possible, Charlie, that it was deliberately denied you? Is it possible that Tom Tills knows or doesn't know and it denied you? Joel Ford, uh, Jeff Tart, and for the last two years, we've been operating under the assumption that people are spoon feeding you, Sarah McCauley, Jill Swain, Ch uh, John Woods, and all the other elected officials to find out that now, three weeks prior to the closure of that contract, we're finding the truth. I think, no, I haven't seen the report. Um, and as a member of the joint LOT, L, joint L, LTS, um, I've sat here for seven years and I've never seen Sarah McCauley get spoon fed anything. She's as sharp as they come. Um, Warren Cooksey's got a job now that didn't exist a year ago because we're trying to push everything back down to the regional and division levels and get away from this consolidation of power in Raleigh where you may be division 10 but that just means you're over in this cubicle in Raleigh. So I mean I think we have done tremendous things in those two areas. It doesn't seem like you're working for us when we get this when we're asking a, what we think is a fairly logical question about getting this proposal used or banged up against the new criteria. It seems almost ludicrously simple. And, um, and I think the government is just overcomplicated. Um, my only hesitation is I was under the impression, and I could be wrong, so anyone's taken this job or news, I admit I could be wrong, but I was under the impression that it had been scored. Um, I, 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 that was my understanding. I don't know if I'm 100% right. Um, I've been married 15 years, so I'm used to being wrong. Um, um, 14C. <laughs> um, we know where they have to be within some reason. We do not know the exact parcel of land, but they cannot, um, they have to be where within the points. There has to be at least four. And, they, and while it says they have some flexibility on that, they really don't. Later in the contract it says they don't have that flexibility. So the ingress and egress points are going to be, there's going to be one, I think one's right there between 1923. I, you know, within my the, point. You don't know all this. Why is this going forward when these answers, questions are not answered? It's, it's ludicrous. Uh, if you're only, asking something you don't even know all the answers to. The only, um, you know, Based on your own analysis, that document was prepared April 26th. Whatever. 2012-2013, document surveyed. But the, 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 the numbers that we weren't going to get until the bids came in were... No, no, those numbers were available to you last year. 
Uh, the actual project numbers as far as what it was going to bid on was not available until the projects were bid. We had estimates. The Santec report was available to anybody on your committee 2012, 2013 when they were released, according to Lewis Mitchell. Is he lying? Uh, the only thing I would say is if you look at the numbers that we are talking about, you're talking about a... The toll rates, the $13 billion, and the uh, cost of this, uh, generally not the cost, but those three major issues that will have a major long-term impact on our community were available in 2012-2013 to your committee. Um, I've known Tom Tillis a long time. And I've been in a lot of rooms with Tom when I read about that people in this room were in. And then I read about things that supposed to be happening in that room that just flat out didn't happen. And um, no one is perfect, except for my wife. Um, Jesus. Um, I'll concede. So with that being said, I, I would like to have a hard stop at 8 o'clock tonight, which is an hour and a half. Um, that way I can put my kids to bed. Um, <coughs> So, I, I actually leave in 10 minutes to go to Raleigh tonight. I have to be there for a committee meeting first thing in the morning. 